Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Luke, today, perfect timing, we're talking about engineering the perfect turkey. Is it really engineering the turkey or is this... Well, in my mind, everything's a little bit of engineering. That's because you're just such a good engineer, James. That is obviously the case. That's why I'm in marketing. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get started, if you don't understand anything we're talking about, go check out a quick blog post by our friends at Short Sleeve and Tie Club. They actually have some cool maths okay. behind cooking the perfect turkey. And this is also for people, I would say, predominantly in the U.S. because we have some coworkers that when we talk about Thanksgiving, they like don't get it because obviously they don't celebrate it. But do you think they eat turkeys in other countries like we do on like a, or do you think they eat more turkey? I, I, I don't know. This is something that I've never considered. Yeah, because like we, I eat turkey like once a year, like a roasted turkey. You right. never eat, so you don't eat it for Christmas, or you don't no, eat it. We for do ham. Okay. Easter's a ham. Easter's a ham. Yeah. So turkey. St. Patrick's Day is a Guinness. The St. Patrick's Day is bangers and mash, bangers and, and mash. maybe corned nice. beef or something like that. Okay. But uh, I don't know. Maybe they eat turkey more often. Maybe some of our listeners can chime in. They can I know, know we have a huge non-U.S. listener base. Very, very large. Okay. I didn't listener mean to base. All right. First step to cooking the perfect turkey, or engineering it for that matter, okay. is thawing said turkey. Right. So typically, you're going to take that sucker out and put it in the refrigerator. For like a long time. For right? like five days to thaw this thing, or longer. <laughs> Funny story, uh -oh. super quick. So my father's a butcher, and it is Thanksgiving morning, and this guy shows up at the, the store and says, uh, I need a turkey. So my dad gives him a frozen turkey, and he says, oh, well, no. do you have fresh? He's like, no, we, we sold out of fresh turkeys, and the guy said, well, how do I cook this frozen turkey? He said, in about four and a half days. <laughs> and he's like, there's nothing you can do. He's like, you can't put this turkey in your oven and back and like thaw it out. And my dad kind of lovingly laughed at him and said, you can cook that turkey in about four days. Yeah, that's not so, really how yeah, it works. You, yeah, you got to be prepared for this. So there is a way to speed it up. I've heard this. And that's to put the turkey in cold water. Water bath. And you basically have to continue changing the water because your turkey can't get above 40 degrees and your water can't get super cold or else it doesn't really help speed yeah. up the process. And the 40 degrees is like bacteria and nastiness, yeah, that's, right? that's gross. We don't want to risk you getting sick. So just put your, your turkey in the fridge a week ahead of time yep. and you're all good. You're good. How about that? All right, so a little bit of engineering talk. When you're talking cooking turkeys, especially in the conventional way, mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about radiation, conduction, and convection. Okay. So all of our favorite thermal stuff. I like the thermals. Do you? Yeah. I, I do not like it. Uh, I took it my sophomore year in college with a Nuke E professor who cared nothing for teaching and was all about the research and he showed up drunk a lot. It was interesting. I actually did it as a profession for a short time until I realized my color blindness it does not help. was an issue. So anyways, radiation is in the traditional oven is basically the heat coming from the heating element mm -hmm. in your oven and it radiates to the bird yep. and all around. Uh, turkey tip number one. I have a number of turkey <laughs> tips turkey for tips. you. Turkey nice. tip number one. If you need to control the radiation, you can use aluminum foil on some or all of the bird. So it turns out that not all of the bird cooks in the same way and we'll get into that a little later yep. on and some of the parts are bigger than others, maybe aluminum foil will help. Gotcha. I mean, you really have to get into your turkey cooking for that. Yeah. Conduction, it occurs from when the heat of the pan conducts into the bird. So the metal of the pan. That's physical like, contact. Physical contact. So the skin of the bird on touch, touching the metal in the pan, it kind of heats up faster. And so that part will Cook start faster cooking too, faster. Correct. correct. Gotcha. And so that's conduction. And then convection is basically the transfer of heat from the surface of the bird into the center of the bird. So the nerdiest thing I saw when looking into all of this, and I looked into it far too long. I'm sure you did, based off your six pages of notes. <laughs> the energy in the air excites the molecules on the surface of the meat, and then they transfer heat to the molecules inside it, and so on, slowly passing the energy towards the center of the meat like a heat wave. So, wow. this, so breaking it down, most of the meat is cooked by the meat, not the air. It would all be cooked by it. it it's that, so the outside is all, it's going to cook down to the center, correct? Right. Okay. Yep. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I like that. But just remember, just because your bird is out of the oven doesn't mean that it's done cooking. 
Yes. Because, as we know, we just explained, it's cooking inward. Mm -hmm. So as that outside's cooling down, the inside's still potentially heating up further. So you can get as much as a 10 degree increase in temperature through the center over time. So you might want to pull that bird out just a little bit early as you let it cool. So interesting fact, so not turkey tip, we'll call it turkey fact. Turkey fact, okay. Uh, up until 1994, 5-ish, the temperature was, the minimum temperature that they recommended, you know, FDIC or whoever does that. I think that's, I think that's banks, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> I think it FDIC, is banks. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the recommended internal temperature was 185 degrees. Wow. And what was happening was people were overcooking their turkeys, the turkeys were dry, and I think it would, they said right around 1994, 95, they actually lowered it to 180 or 175, which I, I still think is too high if you look at what it would be. Well, you like your, yours a little pink, so. Well, no, it just needs to be not overcooked. And oh. as soon as you go above, like 165, I feel like you're overcooking poultry. I'll get into that some more okay. as well. So people tried to engineer the perfect turkey. And we like to simplify because yeah. we're lazy, as humans in general. Not you and I. No, we, no, no. We go take things very seriously. Definitely not you and I. But they go with something called the spherical model. And if any of you have researched turkey wow. cooking, you've seen the spherical model. Of course. And that's basically just assuming that the turkey is a sphere, which it clearly is not. So obviously, that is one inaccuracy for this whole model to begin with. So first, they're varying the thickness of the different parts of the bird, which require different cooking conditions. Mm -hmm. Second, there's white meat and there's dark meat. And this gets back to the temperature stuff you were talking about. White meat should be about 155 to 160 degrees tops to remain juicy and delicious. Mm -hmm. The dark meat, which is gross anyways, oh. is, is more muscles and connective tissue, and therefore it needs to get around 180 degrees and, or else it'll be uh, less, it'll be chewier. And that's just how it is. I'm not sure we can continue this. Well, I'm sorry. This whole you, podcast, I, I, I think knew is you were going right to be now. a dark meat guy. I, I knew, knew you were going to not be a dark meat guy. Yeah, because white meat's so good, and you just pour some gravy over it. And ah, so we've had a similar conversation recently about steak, steak and fat and the benefit of fat in a steak. I'm not saying there isn't benefit of fat. I'm just saying there's a reason a fillet costs more. Okay. Is that what we're ending we're this on? We're going to have to agree to disagree. Okay. Anyways, so because of the the construction of that meat, the muscles and the connective tissue, it actually needs that higher temperature and that higher cooking temperature for it to start to chemically react properly mm -hmm. to start cooking nicely. But the good thing is, you typically cook a turkey, dark meat is all on the bottom side of the turkey, so it's going to be the conductin. The, the conductin? The conductin? <laughs> The turducken? It's, it's going to be the <laughs> conduction heat transfer from the pan, so right. it'll obviously be hotter than the top of the turkey where the turkey breasts are, which is the convection, not the good part, but oh. where the convection is happening. So all it, right. it gets hotter anyways. Turkey tip number two, and I know this might be stealing a little thunder from you. That's all right. Adding the thermal mass, see I'm really nerding it up, adding the thermal mass of stuffing to the bird doesn't really lead to longer cook times and drier meat. It doesn't lead to long, and so the, the reason why it does lead to longer cook times is... It's like barely. Well, it could be up to half an hour to 45 minutes because be. the reason is when you cook that turkey, if there's salmonella inside of the turkey, it's going to go into that stuffing. And to kill that salmonella, that the stuffing has to be a minimum but the of 160 of the meat. Yeah. doesn't necessarily need exactly. to be higher. But what you do is, if so you got to check two different temperatures then. you got to check the thickest part of the breast, and that has to be 165-ish. And then you have to check the stuffing too, and that also has to be 165. Because if that's not at 165 and there happen to be salmonella in the stuffing, you're going to have a, a pretty bad thing. Do you trust the thermometer that they put in there? I have that. that the pop so that's oh, one of my questions cover this? for you. Okay, yeah. okay. We'll so find about that later. The last thing I want to talk about, and then we're going to take a break for a word from our sponsors, is the 20 minute per pound rule. So if you've ever got, got purchased a butterball turkey, it says right on there, cook 20 minutes per pound. And that's the rule. But that's not exactly right. No. So there's a great analysis out there uh, done in CFD, Computational Fluid Dynamics, that broke all of this down for us. Okay. But it turns out that 
when it comes to cooking a turkey, it's kind of a nonlinear equation based on the ratio between the surface area and the mass of the turkey. Yep. So it's not just the weight of the turkey that matters. Plus, I mean, there are different shapes and sizes, mm -hmm. so these things are going to matter. It depends on stuffing or not, like we were just talking about. And obviously, you should have stuffing because, yeah, duh. Yeah. Oh. OK, so I'm glad we at least agree on yes, that. Yes, we do. So the rule is T, cooking time, equals the quantity, W, the turkey weight, divided by 20, raised to the 2 thirds, okay. times T, the cooking environment temperature. Wow. For stuffing, same thing, plus 30 minutes. Yeah, th there is extra time required for the stuffing. So basically, you're figuring out uh, a nonlinear equation. And you'll see how it kind of ramps up over mm -hmm. time. And it does re remain basically linear in its cooking, but at the start and at the end, it's very different. If you watch the temperature very closely with something very accurate, you'll see that it almost doesn't uh, ever get to the finished yeah. temperature. Yeah, which it's is kind of interesting. most meat does that, especially right. large pieces of meat. They hit what's called a plateau, and especially when you're doing a lot of smoking, um, like smoked meats get that because you cook at a lower right. temperature. It plateaus, and you got to wait for it, wait for it, and then it'll start to rise again at some point. And sometimes it rises after you pull it out and let it sit. Right. So. All right, so quick break for a word from our sponsor. We have sponsors this week? We do not, but we have, I think, a record tying five shout outs oh to goodness. give. Wow, we're going to have to burn through these. So I didn't read four of the five emails. Sorry, guys. They're sitting there. I'll get to them this week, I okay. swear. Perfect. Tony, Adam, John, Jeff, and the one I'm, I read and I'm going to give a shout out to is Arnaud from Ireland. Oh, that's the one we just talked about. We just talked about. First off, he loves the show, listens to it on the way to work, wants a sticker for his 3D printer so he can be the talk of the town. And he's because, Irish, so he's obviously he's, one of our best listeners. Right, clearly, our strong European following. Yeah. But in the PS, he said, I now tend to tell people you are the worst. Which I think, yes. I think Luke is making this trend. I am. You are. Thank you. Well done. That I, I, I couldn't be happier. This could be like a, like one of the biggest it's accomplishments. It's like a pinnacle of it's your life. It's a pinnacle of my yeah. life that I'm getting people in Europe to say you yeah. were the worst. So shout out to all five of you. Thanks awesome. for writing in. I'll I be getting it. back to you soon. Uh, if anybody else wants to write in or get stickers or anything else, email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. Also, subscribe. Go to iTunes or Podbean or wherever you listen and subscribe to us. That would make me feel good. Yep. And if you could, please go write a review yeah. of Unprofessional Engineering. I see the number of reviews increasing slowly, but I would love it to be huge. Yeah. Just make it a five-star review when you do it. Yeah, even if it's not like a great review, just do a review. Oh. I was saying just do great ones, yeah, but, but apparently anyone works. Four stars. Oh, okay. That's a, that's a given. Review is so that's long as it's good. All right, so moving on, Luke. You want uh, to talk about other ways to cook? Before we do that, Ooh, I want to jump back uh, a little bit to uh, the resting time that you had mentioned right. before. Yes. So, and this is not just with turkeys, any large cuts of meat where the surface area to volume ratio is off. So obviously a turkey has minimal surface area, but lots of mass. Think like a medicine ball. You know, it's really heavy, really dense, lots of mass, but there's not a ton of surface area. Um, so the reason why you have to let those sit, and obviously you mentioned the heat continues to, you know, go into the center of the turkey, but the reason why the meat is juicier mm. when you do the resting. And I love some juicy turkeys. So hungry. Uh, I, know, I, I, so I can't wait for Thanksgiving. <laughs> we really should have legs oh, here or something. Goodness. So the reason is whenever you're cooking, what happens is the water in the muscle forces its way out to the outermost, outermost surface. And that's why you see steam inside of the oven and you see all the, the droplets on the skin. But when you let that sit, what happens is as that temperature starts, so it, it heats up a little bit, five, 10 degrees, but then when it starts to cool, it reabsorbs all of that water that it pushed out from the center. So if you ever pull a turkey out and you cut it right away, juices just pour out of the turkey, where if you wait, sometimes up to like an hour, 45 minutes, and yeah. then you slice it, all the juice is retained in the muscle. So absolutely have to let turkey sit. If you mm. don't let turkey sit, minimum like 20 to 30 minutes. My, my, when my mother does it, and she makes the best turkey ever. Obviously. Um, it's literally like an hour, 45 minutes, she lets the turkey sit. And it's still hot as all get out, right? So you all get out. You put a little foil tent on and it. I mean, if it's not, you just pour some gravy over it, and then yeah. that's hot. 
Are you a gravy fan? I am a huge fan. Oh my so gosh. Meat juices are so good. So they, <laughs> okay. I don't want to get ahead of myself. All right. I'll, I'll save that for later. All right. Other ways to cook a okay. turkey. Let's get into it. Huh? So uh, the first one that is new, I'm not going to say new, high-end restaurants have been doing this a while. Have you ever heard of sous vide? No. That does not sound <laughs> It doesn't American. sound like a word, right? Yeah. Okay. So sous vide is whenever you cook any kind of meat or whatever you happen to be cooking in a water bath. So you've seen these oh, devices. Oh, I have seen this. So basically you get a giant pot, you put this little attachment in it with a heating element, and it keeps the water to a certain temperature, and you cook it in these plastic bags. So the reason it's so good at cooking everything is because it's in these plastic bags, zero moisture leaves. The interesting thing is it doesn't brown anything. So who, right. wants, who wants this big right. flesh-looking turkey? Why don't you just brown it up real so, Yeah, quick. so what they do is the way they recommend sous vide is you do a water bath, 185 degrees, five hours for just about any size turkey above 15 pounds. Uh, and then you chill it in an ice bath and get it on to room temperature and then you put it in the refrigerator and then you only need to cook it for an hour and a half, 350 uncovered the next day. Interesting. So a lot of preparation, but supposedly this is one of the most juiciest ways to make a turkey because it's in that bag and zero moisture leaves. Our friend Dave from episodes one through thirty has He's one of those cookers, guy. yeah, and the, the water bath cookie thing. Yeah, and he he said the same thing that all of the meat kind of looks the same. Yeah, but but that it's really but you have to brown good. it up with a little once torch you once or you something. get it tuned in to like yeah. what type of meat needs what. Yeah, he says that's delicious. Uh, so that so again it's one eighty five. How big does that thing have to be to cook a turkey? Well, they, you got to rip it, it apart. Yeah, so you you probably would need I would think maybe multiple sous vide devices I to kind of keep that. So what it does is circulates the the water and heats it at the same time right. to keep it so okay really interesting way i may try that with something other than a turkey that, that seems pretty yeah. daunting to do yeah. that with a turkey first time next up and i think you told me you did this one maybe you didn't is smoking a turkey i i haven't done a turkey they're so big i'd have to pull all the racks out and hang it but you've done a chicken and i've done chi I've, I've done, done a chicken myself. like i've done the the big chickens and the pieces of chickens. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, smoking a turkey sounds amazing. So smoking, uh, again. Also, how long must it take to smoke yeah. a turkey so if you're doing it day of? I got 225, eight to 10 hours is like, yeah. the, and if you get a really big turkey, it's obviously oh, gotta go longer, to longer than that. Uh, but the great thing about smoking, and you know this, is because you cook at such a low temperature, and as long as you got a good water bath in there, it's crazy juicy when you smoke a turkey. And who doesn't love everything smoked? Right. Um, and you can brine it beforehand yes. with great flavors like apple cider or oh, yeah. wine. And then, I don't know. Well, go ahead. Keep doing what you, you and, have to say about the, it. No, no. I was done with the smoking. I, if you had anything else the to The other add thing there. I was going to say, if you are doing a brine, you might want to, and... Even if Why not, it, yeah. you might want to uh, add a wood chip that matches it. Either, or not matches, but complements it. Yep. So I would typically use a fruit wood chip to okay. do like a poultry. Okay. Uh, it's a little it's a little. I'm a big fan weaker. of apple yeah. and pecan is my Ooh, latest one. Pecan on my, might be pe good pecan with this. Pecan is the latest one uh, It's doing. basically like dessert and turkey all in one. Wouldn't that be amazing? Oh. Uh, and I will give a shout out. I'm trying to do less episode shout outs, but since Smokers was episode numero uno, you might want to go check that one out. The first episode you first did? First episode we nice. did. Nice. Yeah. In the last way, now granted, there's all different oh, little ways. So it, many more ways. Could, but go generally ahead. speaking, we talked about roasting, smoking, sous vide, deep frying is the next one. So deep frying, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later um, in my terrible engineering ideas, but oh. deep frying, it's 350 degree oil. Uh, and I'm going to throw in 175 degrees C for our wow. Non -US look at base. you! I, I had to. What about K? I had to look. <laughs> I have 273 plus. Wow. Okay. Uh, so you got to cook the turkey. The nice thing about this is it's really fast. If it's a is it's only three and a half minutes per pound. Um, I saw that. So it's a, so it's a pretty quick Rough. cook. Yeah. So the nice thing about deep frying is you're going to have crazy crispy skin. It's typically going to be super juicy, uh, and it cooks really fast. That's it the does. nice thing about deep frying. But we'll talk about the dangers. And it's deep fried, so it must be delicious. Yeah. Turkey tip number three. Number three. Number three. Inject that sucker with some cheese. Cheese? Oh, or something. You've never injected things with cheese? I've never done cheese. Oh, I've, I've done the, the, the juices and the garlic and things like that. I've done that, but I've never done a oh, yeah. cheese injection. Oh, my goodness. What's better than deep fried meat stuffed with cheese? <laughs> Holy cow. 
You might not live to see another well. Thanksgiving, but boy, would it be delicious. Okay. I have a couple other things Shoot. listed. One will be grilled, so you can actually grill your turkey. So things to watch out for is the grill temperature is much less consistent yeah. or accurate than an oven or a roaster. Okay. So you have to watch both the temperature of the grill as well as the meat temperature extra, which is just fine, especially because a lot of places it's cold for Thanksgiving, yeah. like lovely Pittsburgh. That's fine. And also, since grills tend to dry out the meat, it's harder to collect drippings yeah. for gravy, which there's no use having Thanksgiving without. Yes. Beer can turkey, this is kind of similar. Basically, set that thing on a beer can and you infuse it with beer, like a 24, 32 but, ounce But these beer. are all variations they're, they're of They're all variations. Well, grilling's a little different, I'd yeah. say. But again, this is like grilling it, and it helps keep it moister, though, if you're doing it on the grill. And the last one has nothing to do with the types of cooking, but it is the turducken, which is the turkey stuffed <coughs> with a duck stuffed with a chicken. And hopefully there's layers of stuffing in between each of them, because that sounds horrible. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard of turducken, I've seen turducken, I've never tasted turducken. Me neither. I have no what interest. About, oh, I got one for you, and I imagine you're probably going to punch me when I say it. Tofurky. No. <laughs> Out. I'm not going to punch you because I don't condone violence on video. <laughs> so my but... brother dated a vegetarian for a number of years, and this was years and years ago, and she brought tofurky to our family's Thanksgiving. And it was kind of shaped like a turkey, and there was stuffing in it, so when you sliced it, you could see like the stuffing and then the fake to tofurky on the outside. And she was telling us how great this thing was. It was possibly the most disgusting <laughs> thing I've ever tasted. Not that there's anything wrong like, with I that. I literally felt like picking it up and just throwing it in the garbage <laughs> right in front of her. Sorry. That seems mean. We're going to lose all of our vegetarian and vegan audience. But uh, I just... One yeah. of my friends is a vegetarian, and he always gets... I think they're called seitan. It's seitan. It's like wings. Okay. But fake wings. Okay. And he says they're delicious, and they look like... They look like tofu. Okay. Anyways, let's take another break for this week's Luke's Terrible Engineering. Yeah, so this is what we talked about this one <clears throat> before, and this is deep frying. And I'm not saying don't deep fry your turkey, but here's a couple things you need to think about when you're deep frying. Don't be a moron and deep fry in your garage, in your basement, in your home. Uh, make sure the turkey is close to room temperature or at least refrigerator temperature. You see all these videos of people taking their turkey, they're in their garage, it's frozen or super cold, they drop something cold and wet into 350 degree oil, and if you've ever done that, it, 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 it bubbles up, and the bubbling isn't the problem, but when the oil hits the flame, next thing you know, you burn down your garage and, yep. you're, and you're a YouTube basically sensation for burning down your garage. So a couple tips if you are deep frying. So I'm not saying it's bad, but if you do it right, you're okay. Make sure it's close to room temperature. Make sure the turkey is dry because water and oil don't mix. So pat the outside, Turns pat out. the inside. So if you hang that turkey, it shouldn't be dripping water. Make sure all the cavity and everything is done. And you can also use a lower temperature of oil and raise it after you put it in. So you could start out with like a 250 oil and then crank it up to 350 so that initial boiling doesn't happen. Wow. So it's not terrible engineering, it's just if you do it right, you're safe. Do it out in the yard, keep the kids and dogs away. There you go. So That actually was turkey tip number four that I had. Did I steal it from you? Make sorry. it fresh. Don't use yeah. frozen. Yeah. Don't risk it. Get a fresh turkey and drop that thing in there. And That way things don't explode. Do a backup turkey because if you ruin that turkey, you should, because you don't want because your you're primary, going to. Yeah, you're going to. <laughs> your primary turkey shouldn't probably be deep fried unless you've done it before. Right. So I know you have some fun for us to get into, but first I wanted to talk about four crazy ways to cook turkeys. Crazy? With NASA equipment. Whoa. So if you have access to NASA equipment, stolen, who doesn't? This right? is stolen straight from our friends at Gizmodo, so thank you guys for doing the work on this one. We're boys with those guys. We're tight. The antenna dish recipe. What you need is Capton, I don't know what that is, turkey, and a giant satellite. Okay. You, you get the turkey, you tie it to the giant satellite dish. Uh, <laughs> okay. And you you wrap it around in this this stuff, this K-A-P-T-O-N. It's actually the stuff that you make those thermal blankets out okay. of. And this big old satellite dish acts as a big old parabolic collector and focuser of solar energy. Okay. And then you also need a thermal data uh, 
acquisition system to wow. keep track of the temperature of your turkey. So you can cook it up on this giant wow. satellite dish. That's Next, interesting. Next, the thermal vacuum chamber. All you need is the Goddard thermal vacuum chamber, which seems like there's probably not a lot of those sitting around. Yeah. 12,000 turkeys, because there's a lot of space in there. You need to individually seal all of them in their own bags. It's like a Meals on Wheels project with that many turkeys, right? Okay. Absolutely, okay. yes. This is for the volunteers out there. Gotcha. Uh, it's a 40 foot tall and 27 foot round vacuum chamber, wow. so that's cool. Assuming the turkeys are stuffed, it takes about a cubic foot or so of space, and it holds 10 to 12,000, and then boom. There you go. What was that like? Cooks in like two seconds, or would it, uh, do we have cook times on, on the on the Goddard? Three hundred F at two hours. Wow, that's not bad. So if you're in a rush, call these guys. Call these guys if you're in a rush for twelve thousand turkeys, okay. and they've got your back. Uh, next would be the sounding rocket recipe. So all you need is a static rocket engine, okay, a turkey, and a protective box because blasting the the flame straight on the turkey may singe it a little bit. A little bit. And you also need some extra fuel because, of course, NASA's not just going to hand you that. The, the rocket, sure. The fuel, not so the much. The next time our friends at Firefly do a rocket that test. That is a great video. We need we to take some that. turkeys over. And cook them up. Cook them up. Yeah. So basically you blast that like protective wall, cooks up the turkey, uh, 349 at 145. Not bad. Not bad. And then last but not least, are you ready? Yes. The Solar Dynamics Observatory recipe. Wow. All you need is the Solar Dynamics Observatory in space. Uh, it is at minus 328 degrees out on the outside, but you put it on the sun-facing side, and that will be exposed to temperatures about, once it you know gets around to the sun-facing okay. side, about 400 degrees F. Leave it there for an hour and 45 minutes, and it will be cooked completely. 400, you have to wrap some foil on it. That's yeah, a little probably. High. Yeah, but then you just have to peel it off of there, gotcha. and you're good to go. So if you have access to the NASA equipment, go ahead and yeah. try some of these recipes, right? I'd love it if these NASA guys, I'm sure, are listening to our show. We're tight with this. them, too. Yeah. We'll do this. Absolutely. Okay. All right, let's hear it. So hard hitting, I, I, I got a couple questions. To stuff or not to stuff, James? I think I've made it clear that to stuff is the obvious right answer. Obvious right answer. Okay. Though, you make a pan of out, out of the bird stuffing yeah, as well. Yeah, because you've got those weirdos that won't eat in the bird stuffing. I'll take them both. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll eat both, but I think the, the stuff that's in, you get, you get the crusty stuff that's kind of coming out of the butt of the turkey, <laughs> and then the inside stuff is all moist. <laughs> it gets so appetizing, oh. but yes. Okay, yes, so you do. a couple reasons why you may not want to stuff the turkey, and I totally, I would, no reason, I would take ahead. food poisoning and salmonella poisoning just obviously. to eat the stuffing. So first one, safety. The poultry obviously could have salmonella, and it could go into the stuffing. You don't get to 165, you're going to get salmonella. Uh, number one is the quality, too. Because you have to cook that stuffing to a certain temperature, you could potentially overcook the bird itself, and the quality of the primary dish, the turkey, could suffer. Next one is the stuffing texture. Some people don't like, I like the wet, I like a combination of the wet some stuffing. Some people are wrong. And the, cru the crunchy. Um, Not some everyone don't can like be right. It. I'm totally with Except you. me. Uh, it definitely takes at least a half an hour longer. Okay. Minimum, usually. Uh, and also, some people just don't like the way stuffing tastes. They like the, you know, the, the, the taste of that, that stuffing you get in a box and you just put some, like, turkey juice on it from a, from a can, I would totally take salmonella over yeah. any of that. So so quick story and then another comment. Three, four, five, six, I don't know how many years ago, my mom was making stuffing and she's cutting up all the bread. She makes it by hand. Ooh, how nice. Chop the tip of her finger off. In the stuffing. Don't know where it went. <laughs> Assume somebody ate it. So <gasps> sorry, family. Hope none of you listen. That's oh, gross. That's disgusting. Uh, okay, so hold on. Another good? statement here. Statement. I think we need to have a new segment, which we basically do, and it's something around the effect of throwing the wife under the bus. Yeah. Because she does not like turkey. Yeah. What? I know. Like, what? What kind of decision did, did you I know, make? Did you know this before Were you asked her I to mean, marry? I mean, I did, but it didn't really seem like such a big deal until wow. this past weekend, when again she's like, "Ugh." Can I get my wedding turkey? gift back? Yeah, you should. Okay. Wow, she's horrible. I know. 
She's the worst. She is the worst. Okay. <laughs> well done. So uh, we got some popcorn questions for you. Popcorn. You're going to answer, and then I'm going to give you a hard time about I don't it, depending like popcorn. on what your answer is. Uh, um, Go ahead. Do you trust the pop-up timer, yes or no? No. Uh, do you cook by weight or temperature? Uh, well, we just we refuted weight, so definitely not. So it has to be pan, temperature. But temperature, yes. So you use like a thermal probe. Oh, yeah. and thermal probe. Okay. Uh, and you have to have your oven, depending on what you do. You have to use the, the measurer for there yep. too to keep it calibrated. Yep. Yep. Uh, when you do get the turkey and you let it sit and you do all that preparation, do you slice as you serve and eat, or do you slice all at one time? Well, see, that depends. We have our family gathering that's like 30 people. So okay. we slice the whole thing. The whole thing. And lay it out there. And okay. then we have extra turkey as well. Okay. So we do half of the go. turkey, and then we leave the other half just in case we don't go through it, and right. then we slice okay. it as needed. Okay. Um, have you ever heard of cooking your turkey upside down? I have heard about that. Where you put the turkey that. breast down. So yeah. Reasoning. I don't know. I don't know. The dark meat is typically in the bottom when you cook a turkey, and when and all that juice is down there, and all the oil and the fat yeah. and the grease. So if you cook a turkey upside down, the theory is all that moisture from runs the fat through. runs down oh. through and makes the turkey breast. It makes the turkey in general moister, but the turkey breasts, if they're on the bottom, they'll be at a higher temperature, and white meat dries out quicker I was than dark meat. Maybe if there's a convection oven or some heating element at the top perhaps, or something. Perhaps. What about putting it in a bag? Have you ever done that? I have. Um, made a I, big difference or no? No, I haven't noticed the difference. Okay. And rest. It's all about resting for okay. moisture. Uh, we already issue. We already talked that you're wrong because you don't like dark <laughs> about meat. White meat or dark. Um, do you eat the wings and legs? Yeah. But you don't like dark meat. Wings but, and legs are dark meat. Like the wings, I actually just had wings, turkey wings yesterday. Okay. And I doused them in Red Hot, Frank's Red Hot, because they're basically chicken wings at that point. It's really big chicken wings. Really big so chicken wings. So you do wings and legs, but not oh, the dark meat. Oh, I eat the dark meat. meat. I just prefer oh, the white okay. meat. Okay. Okay. Um, what are giblets, James? All the grossness. All the grossness okay. in that little bag. So disgusting. Do you eat the heart? Uh, so I, I don't, but... Years and years ago, and I don't think she does anymore, mother used to make the gravy with the giblets. Yeah. So she would take the neck and the heart and all those little things, and she would basically put that in like a little strainer thing and make the gravy. And she would take it out so it didn't stay in the gravy, but it flavored the gravy. Uh -huh. And also, interesting story, my mother, when she was first married to my father, didn't take that out of the turkey and cook the turkey with the paper. Uh, I think everybody has a story uh, like that. So the paper bag with all this stuff was inside so of it. So gross. It totally ruined the turkey. Um, <laughs> so nasty. And finally, oh boy, how long do you keep turkey leftovers for if you have them? I don't usually have enough that it's a problem. Okay. But a week. Okay. So technically, you should not keep turkey ah, for more than three days in the refrigerator. Technically. So usually, up until last year, we would go to Autodesk University right after. Yeah. And I would never get leftovers because yeah. of that. Uh, yeah, me too. But my favorite part of the meal is second dinner, Yeah. where I basically make a KFC Famous Bowl out of the leftovers, where it's like... Like mashed potatoes, stuffing, turkey bits, uh, yep. corn, pork, gravy over it, and just go to town. And that's usually about 10 o'clock at oh night after you've had dessert. It's so good. Oh, well, yeah, you need to have dessert going. before, yeah, second, before dinner, second dinner. Before second dinner. Obviously. Oh, man. I am so hungry right now. I cannot wait for it. I what was just it, talking to my days? mother oh. this morning. So Thursday, 4 o'clock, my mom's house. I cannot wait. Yeah. For thank I love Thanksgiving. Well, favorite we, holiday. Interesting fact for me. It's it's up there for me. It used to be my favorite, and now I just kind of smash the whole Halloween through Christmas season together okay. as okay. my favorite time of year. Oh, it's all delicious. We shouldn't do these kind of episodes. I know. I am so hungry right now. Yeah, my stomach is growling. Mine Hopefully the too. mic's not picking it up. Yeah. All right. Well, Luke, happy Thanksgiving. And until next week. This was great. See you guys. Bye now.